you've got so many guys kind of in and out, uh, limited, full, but still a long way. Just try to uh, do, you know, I mean, do what was best for the football team. We, we got a lot of reps in and I would say a very relaxed setting on Wednesday and continue to add to that tempo on Thursday and then today. So, you know, just appreciated their approach, their professionalism to to get a lot of reps done on Wednesday, a lot of plays, to see a lot of plays on both sides of the ball, uh, and then continue to build as the week went on. How's Jay done, and you expect him to play? Yeah, um, you do. I think he's worked hard um, and, and has progressed. You know, So I would say that um, you know, based off the, the body of work that we saw today, you know, excited about that. How much, how much has maybe Marcus Johnson improved since practicing last week? Is he another guy that he is he's getting closer? And, yeah, um, getting closer, and um, you know can't can't say enough about really Marcus and the position of you know what he did in in training camp to to really earn the trust of us and most importantly the quarterback. Um, so you know we'll see where he's at tomorrow, and then obviously I have to make a decision. Now, uh, I know you kind of put an emphasis on maybe receivers getting more physical um, this week and saw a little bit of that in drills. How have they responded to that? Have you seen? Well, it, it, it's hard. You know what I mean? It's hard, right? We didn't really practice in that setting with shoulder pads. So, again, we'll have to see what that looks like. And, John, I hope that it, it translates. But some of this stuff you just can't. You know, I mean, I don't know how you – without pads on and the pace that we were going. And so, um, you know, we're going to have to – we're gonna have to do that. And that's a good lesson and unfortunately it was a you know tough one to learn, but you know, some of these guys are gonna to have to know that you know they're gonna grab them and we're gonna to have to be physical. Farley got in a full week of work this week after missing a couple of weeks. Does the couple of weeks he missed stunt his progress at all? And how is he 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 mind? did stay on top of it. Um, I felt like, you know, giving him things to, to do, you know, while he was out as far as reports on, on players or um, just studying and continue to to not just waste the time focusing on his body, but also focusing on, you know, the mental, uh, sometimes gymnastics of, of a call to call checks that we make. So I think he, you know, ha has done that and tried to improve. And it's, I think that would probably be um, one of the most difficult things, especially for young players, is to stay engaged uh, when physically they're not able to be out there, uh, is how do you, Stay engaged in a meeting. Stay engaged when you're not, you know, watching film and you're you're not even out there. You know, you're not going to show up on the tape. You know, how do you stay engaged to to learn and improve? And um, I think you know he 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 tried to do that. Are you managing Derek a little bit different, just as far as like the rest and recovery, or even some of the things within the building, you know, just to keep him where he needs to be despite so many carries and touches? Uh, differently, I, I don't know. I mean, we just start trying to do what's best for for him ultimately and uh, and the football team and you know he stays on top of it he communicates um, you know I, I I make decisions with Derek and you know try to you know do what's best for him ultimately to try to get him ready to to get back turned around each and every week so I and I, I don't really know what that was Tron so to say differently you know I think I have an idea but I know what we're you know we're kind of doing now how much you have to be concerned with Trevor's legs and how good is he maybe when he does run it? Well, he has run, you know, but again, I think he's made a lot of plays and a lot of yards, um, you know, outside the pocket, you know, even on plays that aren't designed to go out of the pocket, you know, his ability to, to, to keep his eyes down a field to numerous instances where he's kind of finding the line of scrimmage and almost going lateral to it where he probably could enter into the defense. He stays down the line of scrimmage and uh, keeps his eyes down the field. So that was, uh, I, I guess, something unique, I think, to see um, from him as we were watching tape. But you know, he's athletic, he's tall, and you know, saw what, you know, what he did on Thursday night and his ability to, to run the football. Bud mentioned to us yesterday that his pride got in the way when it came to kind of rushing back from that ACL injury maybe came back a little too soon. He's practiced this week. He seems to feel better. I mean, where is his progress right now in terms of, you know, 100%? Well, let's be clear. No one from the time that they start playing football will, will ever be 100%. So let's, let's make sure that, you know, we say that. Um, 
you know, Bud and I have conversations. You know, Bud spoke on his situation, you know, working back and uh, had him at practice this week. So, you know, we'll see where his availability is, you know, tomorrow. Did, did he just kind of, you know, was he just so determined to get back that? Again, you guys had an opportunity. I'm not going to speak for, for Bud. I think that, you know, he touched on, you know, the things that he wanted to talk on yesterday. I got a great deal of respect for Bud. We communicate. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm not going to try to speak for him and what, um, you know, what was going through or what, how he, well, handled it. How has Elijah Molden done just as far as, like, you know, regaining that feel for the position, knowing the help, all, all the things that are required out of that nipple spot? Good. I, you know what I mean? I, you hear him communicating out there. You hear him talking. Um, you know, we just got to try to continue to put him in situations where, you know, he can use, you know, his skill set and hopefully continue to help us on special teams, uh, be instinctive, be a good tackler, um, you know, just working those things in. And, um, but, but, but good, you know what I mean? And so hopefully, you know, we've got him, you know, learning a few positions. You know, I think that that's something that's probably unique for, for a young player, you know, is learning multiple positions, whether that be, you know, nickel, corner, or safety. So, that that's been positive because the more that you learn, you know, more positions that you can learn, the you know the more value you have to the team. After 2019, about sl slot coverage becoming more vertical, uh, just as kind of a trend in the league. He's not the fastest corner you have, but he's got slot instincts. How, how does he fit into I, the evolution I, of that? I know, and and again, I know you referenced 2019. I could barely remember what I said yesterday, but there's different ways to do it. You know what I mean with that? There's, there's very good corners in this league that don't run 4-3, that stay on top, that stay square, that challenge, uh, that, that know their skill set inside and out, know what their strengths are, play to their strengths, uh, know where their help is, play leverage. And you know, that's what all of us, and I don't say us anymore, but that's what every player has to do. Every player has to understand who he is, what his skill set is, um, what his strengths are. And, and how he can maybe mask some of his weaknesses against a, an opponent and knowing what the opponent's strengths are and moves are. And uh, that, that, that's a lot to, um, to continue to work on. You know, there's, you know, just look throughout the league and it's not about the fastest players, but the guys that, that look like they're playing the fastest because they're so comfortable in what they're doing and, um, and, and how they play and react. Outside of it, it's always been very physical on the back, obviously. I wonder if this year you've noticed him doing any more kind of a lower the shoulder uh, kind of stuff than he has in the past. I mean, maybe a little bit. You know, I mean, again, I think that that Derek, the evolution of just trying to, you know, gain yards, understand how guys are trying to tackle him, and you know, but you know, I'm not going to teach him how to play running back. I'm not going to teach him how to play running back. You know, what I mean, I could just focus on ball security and things like that. Like he's going to run where he sees the hole. And, you know. It seemed like he'd done a little bit more of that this year than, than in the past. Maybe. The last couple of weeks, uh, Elijah and, and maybe Racy have been really the only rookies to play significant snaps on offense and defense. Is that coincidence? Is that by design to, to ease that group in? Is it a case-by-case case thing? Case-by-case. Case. Like we have no plans on however old someone is, is to play or not to play. If you're 35 and can help us win, we'll play. If you're 20 and can help us win, you'll play. I mean, just, I think, case-by-case -case basis. And, uh, you know, I, I will say that uh, Monty Rice has showed up on special teams. You know, you like to watch tape and go watch some of the punt returns. I didn't see it in training camp and saw it the last couple of games. I mean, taking a guy out of bounds from the line of scrimmage, uh, taking a guy to the ground legally, hands inside, um, so that's positive stuff. Going down there on a kickoff, making a tackle as a backside two, coming all the way across when it looked like it could probably get out, going down, setting the edge on the tight end. So those are positive things. And I've always tried to tell them, like, uh, most of the linebackers in this league learn a confidence and an understanding about playing in this league from special teams because it's space, it's playing with your hands, it's shedding on the punt team when they're trying to hold you up. It's getting your hands inside and staying square, 
holding guys up. It's it's blocking guys on kickoff return like an open field tackle. These guys are coming down and, and weaving you, and, and you got to stay square, not cross over, not hop, not duck your head. And and I think that, that if we look back over to just the last couple of weeks of how he's played, I would say that he's continuing to improve in those phases. And so you know, hopefully that can continue. Coach Downing had joked that uh, he never hears on the headset that Derek is getting too many carries, but knowing you know, how everything is piling up, is it like, do you even like think about that or you just? No. Trying to win the game, you know? Because then, you know, I mean, it's like Derek ain't getting enough carries. Derek's getting too many carries. I don't know. Like, we'll use Derek to, as a barometer and Derek needs to come out. He comes out. Tony does a good job of spelling them. Got roles for guys. Um, you know, so. Julio? Uh, Julio and Kern. Um, Finch had a protocol. Yes, sorry. Finch and Roger, yes, sorry. <laughs>